Section 1 of The Dream of Durantius. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Russ Hobbs. The Dream of Durantius by John Henry Newman. Section 1. Phase 1. Durantius. Jesu Maria, I am near to death, and thou art calling me, I know it now. Not by the token of this faltering breath, this chill at heart, this dampness on my brow. Jesu, have mercy. Mary, pray for me. Tis this new feeling, never felt before. Be with me, Lord, in my extremity. That I am going that I am no more, tis this strange innermost abandonment. Lover of souls, great God, I look to thee. This emptying out of each constituent and natural force by which I come to be, pray for me, O oh my friends, a visitant is knocking his dire summons at my door, the like of whom to scare me and to daunt has never, never come to me before. Tis death, O oh, loving friends, your prayers, tis he, as though my very being had given way, as though I was no more a substance now, and could fall back on naught to be my stay. Help, loving Lord, thou my soul, refuge thou, and turn no whither, but must needs decay and drop from out this universal frame into that shapeless scopeless blank abyss that utter nothingness of which i came this is it that has come to pass in me o oh, horror this it is my dearest this so pray for me my friends who have not strength to pray assistance Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Holy Mary, pray for him, All holy angels, pray for him, Choirs of the righteous, pray for him, Holy Abraham, pray for him, Saint John Baptist, Saint Joseph, pray for him, Saint Peter, Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, St. John, all apostles, all evangelists, pray for him, all holy disciples of the Lord, pray for him, all holy innocents, pray for him, all holy martyrs, all holy confessors, all holy hermits, all holy virgins, all ye saints of God, pray for him. Gerontius Rouse thee, my fainting soul, and play the man, And through such waning span of life and thought As still has to be trod, prepare to meet thy God. And while the storm of that bewilderment Is for a season spent, And ere afresh the ruin on thee fall, Use well the interval. Assistance Be merciful, be gracious, spare him, Lord. Be merciful, be gracious, Lord, deliver him from the sins that are past, from thy frown and thine ire, from the perils of dying, from any complying with sin or denying his God or relying on self at the last, from the nethermost fire, from all that is evil, from power of the devil, thy servant deliver for once and for ever by thy birth and by thy cross rescue him from endless loss by thy death and burial save him from a final fall by thy rising from the tomb by thy mountain up above by the spirit's gracious love save him in the day of doom gerontius sanctus fortis Sanctus Deus, de profundis oro te, 
miserere jedux meus, parce mihi domini. Firmly I believe and truly God is three and God is one, and I next acknowledge duly manhood taken by the Son, and I trust and hope most fully in that manhood crucified, and each thought and deed unruly due to death as he has died, simply to his grace and holy light and life and strength belong, and thy love supremely, solely, him the holy, him the strong, Sanctus Fortis, Sanctus Deus, de profundis, oro te, miserere, jedux meus, parse mihi domini, and I hold in veneration, for the love of him alone, holy church as his creation, and her teachings as his own. And I take with joy whatever now besets me pain or fear, and with a strong will I sever all the ties which bind me here. Adoration I be given with and through the angelic host to the God of earth and heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Sanctus Fortis, Sanctus Deus, De Profundis Orote, Miserere Jedux Meus, Mortis Indiscrimine. I can no more, for now it comes again that sense of ruin which is worse than pain, that masterful negation and collapse of all that makes me man, as though I bent over the dizzy brink of some sheer infinite descent, or worse, as though down, down for ever I was falling through the solid framework of created things, and needs must sink and sink into the vast abyss, and cooler still, a fierce and restless fright begins to fill the mansion of my soul, and worse and worse, some bodily form of ill floats on the wind with many a loathsome curse tainting the hallowed air and laughs and flaps its hideous wings and makes me wild with horror and dismay. O oh, Jesu, help! Pray for me, Mary, pray! Some angel, Jesu, such as came to thee in thine own agony, Mary, pray for me, Joseph, Pray for me, Mary, pray for me. Assistance Rescue him, O Lord, in this his evil hour. As of old so many by thy gracious power. Amen. Enoch and Elias from the common doom. Amen. Noe from the waters in a saving home. Amen. Abraham from the abounding guilt of heathenness. Amen. Job, from his multiform and fell distress. Amen. Isaac, when his father's knife was raised to slay. Amen. Lot, from burning Sodom on its judgment day. Amen. Moses, from the land of bondage and despair. Amen. Daniel, from the hungry lions in their lair. Amen. And the children three, amid the furnace flame. Amen. Chase Susanna, from the slander and the shame. Amen. David, from Goliath and the wrath of Saul. Amen. And the two apostles, from their prison thrall. Amen. Thecla, from her torments. Amen. So to show thy power, rescue this thy servant in his evil hour. Gerontius Novissima ora est, and I fain would sleep. The pain has wearied me. Into thy hands, O Lord, into thy hands. The Priest Proficisere anima cristiana de hoc mundo. Go forth upon thy journey, Christian soul. Go from this world. Go in the name of God, the omnipotent Father who created thee. 
Go in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, Son of the living God, who bled for thee. Go in the name of the Holy Spirit, who hath been poured out on thee. Go in the name of angels and archangels, in the name of thrones and dominations, in the name of princedoms and of powers, and in the name of cherubim and seraphim go forth. Go in the name of patriarchs and prophets, and of apostles and evangelists, of martyrs and confessors, in the name of holy monks and hermits, in the name of holy virgins and all saints of God, both men and women go, go on thy course, and may thy place today be found in peace, and may thy dwelling be the holy mount of Zion, through the same, through Christ our Lord. Phase 2. Soul of Gerontius. I went to sleep, and now I am refreshed. A strange refreshment, for I feel in me an inexpressive lightness and a sense of freedom as I were at length myself, and ne'er had been before. How still it is! I hear no more the busy beat of time, no, nor my fluttering breath, nor struggling pulse, nor does one moment differ from the next. I had a dream, yes. Someone softly said, He's gone. And then a sigh went round the room. And then I surely heard a priestly voice cry, Subvenite, and they knelt in prayer. I seemed to hear him still. But thin and low and fainter and more faint the accents come, as at an ever-widening interval. Ah, whence is this? What is this severance? This silence pours a solitariness into the very essence of my soul, and the deep rest, so soothing and so sweet, hath something too of sternness and of pain, for it drives back my thoughts upon their spring by a strange introversion and perforce i now begin to feed upon myself because i have naught else to feed upon am i alive or dead i am not dead but in the body still for i possess a sort of confidence which clings to me that each particular organ holds its place as heretofore combining with the rest into one symmetry that wraps me round and makes me man and surely i could move did i but will it every part of me and yet i cannot to my sense bring home by very trial that i have the power tis strange i cannot stir a hand or foot i cannot make my fingers or my lips by mutual pressure witness each to each nor by the eyelid's instantaneous stroke assure myself I have a body still, nor do I know my very attitude, nor if I stand or lie, or sit or kneel. So much I know, not knowing how I know, that the vast universe where I have dwelt is quitting me, or I am quitting it, or I or it is rushing on the wings of light or lightning on an outward course, and we, e'en now, are million miles apart. Yet is this preemptory severance wrought out in lengthening measurements of space, which grow and multiply by speed and time? Or am I traversing infinity by endless subdivision, hurrying back from finite towards infinitesimal, thus dying out of the expansive world? Another marvel, someone has me fast within his ample palm. Tis not a grasp such as they use on earth, but all around, 
over the surface of my subtle being as though i were a sphere and capable to be accosted thus a uniform and gentle pressure tells me i am not self-moving but borne forward on my way and hark i hear a singing yet in sooth i cannot of that music rightly say whether i hear or touch or taste the tones oh what a heart subduing melody angel my work is done my task is o'er and so i come taking it home for the crown is won alleluia for evermore my father gave in charge to me this child of earth e'en from its birth to serve and save alleluia and saved is he this child of clay to me was given to veer and train by sorrow and pain in the narrow way alleluia from earth to heaven soul it is a member of that family of wondrous beings who ere the worlds were made millions of ages back have stood around the throne of god he never has known sin but through those cycles all but infinite has had a strong and pure celestial life and bore to gaze on the unveiled face of god and drank from the eternal fount of truth and served him with a keen ecstatic love hark he begins again angel o lord how wonderful in depth and height but most in man how wonderful thou art with what a love what soft persuasive might victorious o'er the stubborn fleshly heart thy tale complete of saints thou dost provide to fill the thrones which angels lost through pride he lay a groveling babe upon the ground polluted in the blood of his first sire with his whole essence shattered and unsound and coiled around his heart a demon dire which was not of his nature but had skill to bind and form his opening mind to ill then was i sent from heaven to set right the balance in his soul of truth and sin and i have waged a long relentless fight resolved that death environed spirit to win which from its fallen state when all was lost had been repurchased at so dread a cost oh what a shifting party-coloured scene of hope and fear of triumph and dismay of recklessness and penitence has been the history of that dreary lifelong fray and oh the grace to nerve him and to lead how patient prompt and lavish at his need o oh, man strange composite of heaven and earth majesty dwarfed to baseness fragrant flower running to poisonous seed and seeming worth cloaking corruption weakness mastering power who never art so near to crime and shame as when thou hast achieved some deed of name how should ethereal natures comprehend a thing made up of spirit and of clay were we not tasked to nurse it and attend linked one to one throughout its mortal day more than the seraph in his height of place the angel guardian knows and loves the ransomed race soul now know i surely that i am at length out of the body had i part with earth i never could have drunk those accents in and not have worshipped as a god the voice that was so musical but now i am so whole of heart so calm so self-possessed with such a full content and with a sense so apprehensive and discriminant as no temptation can intoxicate nor have i even terror at the thought 
that I am clasped by such a saintliness. Angel All praise to him at whose sublime decree the last are first, the first become the last, by whom the suppliant prisoner is set free, by whom proud firstborns from their thrones are cast, who raises Mary to be queen of heaven, while Lucifer is left condemned and unforgiven. Phase 3 Soul I will address him. Mighty one, my lord, my guardian spirit, all hail. Angel All hail, my child. My child and brother, hail, what wouldst thou? Soul I would have nothing but to speak with thee, for speaking's sake. I wish to hold with thee conscious communion, though I fain would know a maze of things, were it but meet to ask, and not a curiousness. Angel You cannot now cherish a wish which ought not to be wished. Soul Then I will speak. I ever have believed that on the moment when the struggling soul quitted its mortal case, forthwith it fell under the awful presence of its God, there to be judged and sent to its own place. What lets me now from going to my Lord? Angel Thou art not let, but with extremest speed art hurrying to the just and holy judge. For scarcely art thou disembodied yet. Divide a moment as men measure time into its million, million, millionth part, yet even less than that the interval since thou didst leave the body. And the priest cried, Subvenite, and they fell to prayer. Nay, scarcely yet have they begun to pray. For spirits and men by different standards meet the less and greater in the flow of time. By sun and moon primeval ordinances, by stars which rise and set harmoniously, by the recurring seasons and the swing this way and that of the suspended rod, precise and punctual, men divide the hours, equal, continuous, for their common use. Not so with us in the immaterial world, but intervals in their succession are measured by the living thought alone, and grow or wane with its intensity, and time is not a common property, but what is long is short, and swift is slow, and near is distant, as received and grasped by this mind and by that, and every one is standard of his own chronology, and memory lacks its natural resting points of years and centuries and periods. It is thy very energy of thought which keeps thee from thy God. Soul Dear angel, say, why have I now no fear at meeting him? Along my earthly life the thought of death and judgment was to me most terrible. I had it, I, before me, and I saw the judge severe e'en in the crucifix. Now that the hour is come, my fear is fled, and at this balance of my destiny, now close upon me, I can forward look with the serenest joy. Angel it is because then thou didst fear that now thou dost not fear. Thou hast forestalled the agony, and so for thee the bitterness of death is past. Also, because already in thy soul the judgment is begun, that day of doom, one and the same for the collected world, that solemn consummation for all flesh, is, in the case of each, anticipate upon his death, and, as the last great day, in the particular judgment is rehearsed, so now too, 
ere thou comest to the throne, a presage falls upon thee, as a ray, straight from the judge, expressive of thy lot. That calm and joy uprising in thy soul is first fruit to thee of thy recompense, and heaven begun. End of section 1《Section 2 of the Dream of Gerontius by John Henry Newman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Russ Hobbs. Phase 4 Soul. But hark! Upon my sense comes a fierce hubbub, which would make me fear could I be frighted. Angel. We are now arrived close on the judgment court. That sullen howl is from the demons who assemble there. It is the middle region, where of old Satan appeared among the sons of God, to cast his jibes and scoffs at holy Job. So now his legions throng the vestibule, hungry and wild to claim their property, and gather souls for hell, hissed to their cry. Soul. How sour! And how uncouth a dissonance! Demons Low-born clods of brute earth, They aspire to become gods By a new birth, And an extra grace, And a score of merits, As if aught could stand in place Of the high thought, And the glance of fire, Of the great spirits, The powers blessed, The lords by right, the primal owners of the proud dwelling and realm of light, dispossessed, thrust aside, chucked down by the sheer might of a despot's will, of a tyrant's found, who after expelling their host gave triumphant still, and still unjust, each forfeit crown, to psalm droners, and canting groaners, to every slave and pious cheat, and crawling knave who licked the dust under his feet. Angel. It is the restless panting of their being, like beast of prey, who caged within their bars, in a deep hideous purring have their life, and an incessant pacing to and fro. Demons. The mind bold and independent, the purpose free, so we are told, must not think to have the ascendant. What's a saint, one whose breath doth the air taint before his death a bundle of bones which fools adore, <laughs> when life is o'er, which rattle and stink e'en in the flesh? We cry his pardon, no flesh hath he, <laughs> for it hath died, tis crucified, day by day afresh afresh <laughs> that holy clay <laughs> this gains guerdon so priestlings prate <laughs> before the judge and pleads and atones for spite and grudge and bigot mood and envy and hate and greed of blood soul how impotent they are and yet on earth they have repute for wondrous power and skill, and books describe how that the very face of the evil one, if seen, would have a force even to freeze the blood and choke the life of him who saw it. Angel In thy trial state thou hast a traitor nestling close at home, con natural, who, with the powers of hell, was leagued, and of thy senses kept the keys, and to that deadliest foe unlock thy heart. And therefore is it, in respect of man, those fallen ones show so majestical, but when some child of grace, angel or saint, pure and upright in his integrity of nature, meets the demons on their raid, they scud away as cowards from the fight. Nay, oft hath holy hermit in his cell not yet disburdened of mortality, mocked at their threats and warlike overtures, 
or dying when they swarmed like flies around, defied them and departed to his judge. Demons Virtue and vice, a knave's pretense, tis all the same, ha, ha. Dread of hell-fire, of the venomous flame, a coward's plea, give him his price, saint though he be, ha, ha. From shrewd good sense, he'll slave for hire, ha, ha, and does but aspire to the heaven above with sordid aim, and not from love, ha. Ah, soul, I see not those false spirits. Shall I see my dearest master when I reach his throne, or hear at least his awful judgment word with personal intonation as I now hear thee, not see thee, angel? Hitherto all has been darkness since I left the earth. Shall I remain thus sight bereft all through my penance time? If so, how comes it then that I have hearing still, and taste and touch, yet not a glimmer of that princely sense which binds ideas in one and makes them live? Angel Nor touch nor taste, nor hearing hast thou now. Thou livest in a world of signs and types, the presentations of most holy truths living and strong which now encompass thee a disembodied soul thou hast by right no converse with aught else beside thyself but lest so stern a solitude should load and break thy being in mercy are vouchsafed some lower measures of perception which seem to thee as though through channels brought through ear or nerves, or palate, which are gone, and thou art wrapped and swathed around in dreams, dreams that are true, yet enigmatical, for the belongings of thy present state, save through such symbols, come not home to thee. And thus thou tellest of space and time and size, of fragrant, solid, bitter, musical, of fire and of refreshment after fire, as, let me use similitude of earth to aid thee in the knowledge thou dost ask, as ice which blisters may be said to burn. Nor hast thou now extension with its parts correlative, long habit cozens thee, nor power to move thyself, nor limbs to move. Hast thou not heard of those who, after loss of hand or foot, still cried, that they had pains in hand or foot, as though they had it still. So is it now with thee, who hast not lost thy hand or foot, but all which made up man. So will it be until the joyous day of resurrection, when thou wilt regain all thou hast lost, new made and glorified. How, even now, the consummated saints see God in heaven, I may not explicate. Meanwhile, let it suffice thee to possess such means of converse as are granted thee. Though till that beatific vision thou art blind, for e'en thy purgatory, which comes like fire, is fire without its light. Soul, his will be done. I am not worthy e'er to see again the face of day, far less his countenance, who is the very sun. Nathless in life, when I looked forward to my purgatory, it ever was my solace to believe that ere I plunged amid the avenging flame, I had one sight of him to strengthen me. Angel Nor rash nor vain is that presentiment Yes, for one moment thou shalt see thy Lord, thus will it be. What time thou art arraigned before the dread tribunal, and thy lot is cast for ever, should it be to sit on his right hand among his pure elect, then sight, or that which to thy soul is sight, as by a lightning flash, will come to thee, 
and thou shalt see, amid the dark profound, whom thy soul loveth, and would fain approach. One moment, but thou knowest not, my child, what thou dost ask. That sight of the most fair will gladden thee, but it will pierce thee too. Soul Thou speakest darkly, angel, and an awe falls on me, and a fear lest I be rash. Angel There was a mortal who is now above in the mid-glory. He, when near to die, was given communion with the crucified, such that the master's very wounds were stamped upon his flesh, and from the agony which thrilled through body and soul in that embrace, learn that the flame of the everlasting love doth burn ere it transform. Phase 5 Hark to those sounds! They come of tender beings angelical, least and most childlike of the sons of God. First Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depths be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. To us his elder race he gave to battle and to win, without the chastisement of pain, without the soil of sin. The younger son he willed to be a marvel in his birth, spirit and flesh his parents were, his home was heaven and earth. The Eternal blessed his child, and armed, and sent him hence afar, to serve as champion in the field of elemental war, to be his viceroy in the world of matter and of sense, upon the frontier towards the foe a resolute defense. Angel We have now passed the gate, and are within the house of judgment, and whereas on earth temples and palaces are formed of parts costly and rare, but all material, so in the world of spirits naught is found to mould withal, and form into a whole, but what is immaterial. And thus the smallest portions of this edifice, cornice or frieze or balustrade or stair, the very pavement is made up of life, of holy, blessed, and immortal beings, who hymn their Maker's praise continually. Second Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. Woe to thee, man, for he was found a recreant in the fight, and lost his heritage of heaven and fellowship with light. Above him now the angry sky, around the tempest's din, who once had angels for his friends, had but the brutes for kin. O oh, man, a savage kindred they, to flee that monster brood, he scaled the seaside cave, and clomb the giants of the wood. With now a fear, and now a hope, with aids which chance supplied, from youth to eld, from sire to son, he lived and toiled and died. He dreed his penance age by age, and step by step began slowly to doff his savage garb, and be again a man. And quickened by the Almighty's breath, and chastened by his rod, and taught by angel visitings, at length he sought his God, and learned to call upon his name, and in his faith create a household, and a fatherland, a city, and a state. Glory to him who from the mire in patient length of days elaborated into life a people to his praise. Soul The sound is like the rushing of the wind, the summer wind among the lofty pines, swelling and dying echoing round about, 
now here, now distant, wild and beautiful, while scattered from the branches it has stirred to send ecstatic odors. Third Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. The angels, as beseemingly to spirit kind was given, at once were tried and perfected, and took their seats in heaven. For them no twilight or eclipse, no growth and no decay, t'was hopeless all engulfing night or beatific day. But to the younger race there rose a hope upon its fall, and slowly, surely, gracefully the morning dawned on all, and ages opening out divide the precious and the base, and from the hard and sullen mass mature the heirs of grace. O oh man, albeit the quickening ray lit from his second birth makes him at length what once he was, and heaven grows out of earth. Yet still between that earth and heaven, his journey and his goal, a double agony awaits his body and his soul. A double debt he has to pay, the forfeit of his sins. The chill of death is past, and now the penance fire begins. Glory to him who evermore, by truth and justice reigns, who tears the soul from out its case, and burns away its stains. Angel They sing of thy approaching agony, which thou so eagerly didst question of. It is the face of the incarnate God shall smite thee with that keen and subtle pain. And yet the memory which it leaves will be a sovereign febrifuge to heal the wound. And yet withal it will the wound provoke and aggravate and widen it the more. Soul Thou speakest mysteries, still, methinks, I know to disengage the tangle of thy words. Yet rather would I hear thy angel voice than for myself be thy interpreter. Angel When, then, if such thy lot, thou seest thy judge, the sight of him will kindle in thy heart all tender, gracious, reverential thoughts. Thou wilt be sick with love, and yearn for him, and feel as though thou couldst but pity him, that one so sweet should e'er have placed himself at disadvantage such as to be used so vilely by a being so vile as thee. There's a pleading in his pensive eyes will pierce thee to the quick and trouble thee, and thou wilt hate and loathe thyself. For though now sinless, Thou wilt feel that thou hast sinned, as never thou didst feel, and wilt desire to slink away and hide thee from his sight, and yet wilt have a longing eye to dwell within the beauty of his countenance, and these two pains, so counter and so keen, the longing for him when thou seest him not the shame of self at thought of seeing him, will be thy veriest, sharpest purgatory. Soul My soul is in my hand, I have no fear, in his dear might prepared for weal or woe. But hark, a grand mysterious harmony, it floods me like the deep and solemn sound of many waters. Angel we have gained the stairs which rise towards the presence chamber. There a band of mighty angels keep the way on either side, and him the incarnate God. Angels of the Sacred Stair Father, whose goodness none can know but they who see thee face to face, by man hath come the infinite display of thy victorious grace. But fallen man, the creature of a day, 
skills not that love to trace. It needs to tell the triumph thou hast wrought, an angel's deathless fire, an angel's reach of thought. It needs that very angel who with all, amid the garden shade, the great Creator in his sickness saw, soothed by a creature's aid, and agonized as victim of the law which he himself had made. For who can praise him in his depth and height but he who saw him reel amid that solitary fight? Soul. Hark, for the lentils of the presence gate are vibrating and echoing back the strain. Fourth Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. The foe blasphemed the holy Lord, as if he reckoned ill, in that he placed his puppet man the frontier place to fill. For even in his best estate, with amplest gifts endued, a sorry sentinel was he, a being of flesh and blood, as though a thing, who for his help must needs possess a wife, could cope with those proud rebel hosts who had angelic life. And when, by blandishment of Eve, that earth-born Adam fell, he shrieked in triumph, and he cried, A sorry sentinel! The Maker by his word is bound. Escape or cure is none. He must abandon to his doom and slay his darling son. Angel And now the threshold, as we traverse it, utters aloud its glad responsive chant. Fifth Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. O loving wisdom of our God, when all was sin and shame, a second Adam to the fight and to the rescue came. O wisest love, that flesh and blood, which did in Adam fail, should strive afresh against the foe, should strive and should prevail and that a higher gift than grace should flesh and blood refine God's presence and his very self and essence all divine. O oh, generous love that he who smote in man for man the foe, the double agony in man for man should undergo, and in the garden secretly and on the cross on high should teach his brethren and inspire to suffer and to die. Phase 6 Angel Thy judgment now is near, for we are come into the veiled presence of our God. Soul I hear the voices that I left on earth. Angel It is the voice of friends around thy bed who say the subvenite with the priest, hither the echoes come. Before the throne stands the great angel of the agony, the same who strengthened him what time he knelt lone in the garden shade, bedewed with blood. That angel best can plead with him for all tormented souls, the dying and the dead. Angel of the Agony Jesu, by that shuddering dread which fell on thee, Jesu, by that cold dismay which sickened thee, Jesu, by that pain of heart which thrilled in thee, Jesu, by that mount of sins which crippled thee, Jesu, by that sense of guilt which stifled thee, Jesu, by that innocence which girdled thee, Jesu, by that sanctity which reigned in thee, Jesu, by that Godhead which was one with thee, 
Jesu, spare these souls which are so dear to thee, souls who in prison calm and patient wait for thee. Hasten, Lord, their hour, and bid them come to thee, to that glorious home where they shall ever gaze on thee. Soul, I go before my judge. Ah, angel, praise to his name. The eager spirit has darted from my hold, and with the intemperate energy of love flies to the dear feet of Emmanuel. But ere it reached them, the keen sanctity, which with its effluence, like a glory, clothes and circles round the crucified, has seized and scorched and shriveled it, and now it lies passive and still before the awful throne. O oh, happy suffering soul! For it is safe, consumed yet quickened by the glance of God. Soul, take me away, and in the lowest deep there let me be. And there, in hope, the lone night watches keep, told out for me there, motionless and happy in my pain, lone, not forlorn. There will I sing my sad perpetual strain until the morn. There will I sing and soothe my stricken breast, which ne'er can cease to throb and pine and languish till possessed of its sole peace. There will I sing my absent Lord in love, take me away, that sooner I may rise and go above and see him in the truth of everlasting day. Phase 7 Angel Now let the golden prison ope its gates, making sweet music as each fold revolves upon its ready hinge, and ye great powers, angels of purgatory, receive from me my charge, a precious soul, until the day when from all bond and forfeiture released, I shall reclaim it for the courts of light. Souls in Purgatory 1. Lord, thou hast been our refuge in every generation. 2. Before the hills were born and the world was, from age to age thou art God. 3. Bring us not, Lord, very low, for thou hast said, Come back again, ye sons of Adam. 4. A thousand years before thine eyes are but as yesterday, and as a watch of the night which is come and gone. 5. The grass springs up in the morning, at evening tide it shrivels up and dies. 6. So we fail in thine anger, and in thy wrath are we troubled. 7. Thou hast set our sins in thy sight, and our round of days in the light of thy countenance. 8. Come back, O Lord, how long, and be entreated for thy servants. 9. In thy morning we shall be filled with thy mercy, we shall rejoice and be in pleasure all our days. 10. We shall be glad according to the days of our humiliation, and the years in which we have seen evil. 11. Look, O Lord, upon thy servants, and on thy work, and direct their children. 12. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and the work of our hands establish thou it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Angel Softly and gently, dearly ransomed soul, in my most loving arms I now enfold thee, and o'er the penal waters as they roll I poise thee, and I lower thee, and hold thee, and carefully I dip thee in the lake, 
and thou without a sob or a resistance dost through the flood thy rapid passage take sinking deep deeper into the dim distance angels to whom the willing task is given shall tend and nurse and lull thee as thou liest and masses on the earth and prayers in heaven shall aid thee at the throne of the most highest farewell but not for ever brother dear be brave and patient on thy bed of sorrow swiftly shall pass thy night of trial here and i will come and wake thee on the morrow the end end of section two end of the dream of gerontius by john henry newman